Hello YouTubers and fellow hams, 3D printing enthusiasts, RVers, whoever happens to be watching. So I had a viewer make a request. He sent me a direct message and he asked me, how do I make a slashed zero? And I thought he meant just for text, you know, like um, for a signature on a, an email or something. I figured he meant just for text. So what he was talking about was this here. As you can see over here in this text editor, I've got a slashed zero in this fake call sign A zero B C D. Well, that might actually be a <laughs> that might actually be an in use call sign. And if it is, uh, sir or ma'am, whoever has the call, sorry for using your call for my example here. Obviously, I just tried to make a fake call with A zero B C D. Uh, anyway, um, slashed zero. Uh, this I think was really common. Uh, in the computer early computer programming days to designate or clarify a zero versus an O letter O uh, and uh, this gentleman wanted to use that in his call sign so I, I came up with a way that he could do that um, using uh, uh, a simple Google search for slashed zero and then uh, picking any of the uh, um, entries that had the text right so like I think here in this uh, Wikipedia article I was able to find a text slashed zero in here in the uh, somewhere and just highlight it and copy it uh, there's also a way that you can type it using the uh, keypad and the alt key to enter the ASCII code for it specifically which is listed somewhere in here but by far the easiest way to do it was just to come down here, find the, the slashed zero in the text, highlight it, right click and copy it, and then go back to say your text editor and uh, paste it to get that slash zero. Well, um, he wrote back and said, uh, thanks, but no, what I really want to do is create this in Tinkercad for 3D printing. So he's wanting to create a slashed zero for his call sign in Tinkercad. Okay, well there's a couple of different ways to do that. One way would be to trace uh, a two-dimensional image. Okay, so for example I came over here to GIMP and uh, I made a, a text field, right, and uh, I just pasted that slash zero in uh, to create an image. Okay, so now I've got a nice big image of a slash zero. And then I can take that and I can export it. Uh, in this case I'm exporting it as slash zero.png just into a temporary folder, which I've already done. It's there. So now in that temporary folder I have an image of a slash zero. Black on white, two-dimensional. If we want to create a 3D object out of any two-dimensional image, um, you want as simple of an image as possible, and like in this case, it's pretty simple. It's a black on white image. It's a fairly simple shape. Now we can take a program that does vector graphics, um, and in my case, I'm using Inkscape. Inkscape is a free open sourced vector graphic program similar to Adobe Illustrator. Uh, and we will take Inkscape and we'll import that image that we made. It comes in quite large. As you can see here, it's uh, compared to our page, it's huge. So I'm going to shrink it down a bit. If I grab the corner here and I hold down the control key, we'll be resizing it on both axes at the same time, so I'll just shrink that down to where it fits on my page. Probably didn't have to do that. I'm just a little OCD about that. I like to have it fit on the page. So now we've got an image of our slashed zero, and we want to trace that into a vector graphic, right? So it will be represented by lines and curves mathematically. That's what we'll need to import into Tinkercad. 
So in Inkscape, I can go up here to the Path menu, and I can select Trace Bitmap. It gives us lots of options here uh, for the, the edge detection threshold and so on. You can go through and play with those if you can't quite get a good trace. Generally, if an image is black on white, like this, you can see here in this preview that it, it, it has a pretty good um, estimation of the shape. Right? So I'm just going to hit... It might be a little rough down there. I wonder if changing our threshold... No, nope, not really. It didn't change much. Black on white, we've got the highest possible contrast. We're going to get the best trace, right? So I'll just hit OK. Now, it doesn't look like anything happened, but if you noticed back here in the background, you saw a smaller box appear around our shape. It actually did it. It's done tracing it. So it leaves this dialog open so that we can make some changes and, and do it again if we didn't get the result we wanted. But we got a good result. So I'm going to close this box. Now, looking at the canvas here, we can see that we have this smaller traced shape of our original image. So I'm going to get rid of the image. We're done with it. I'll just hit the delete key. It's gone. And we'll take our traced shape back here. And let's take a closer look at what it did. If I go up here and I select the path editor, it's going to show us the paths that it defined. All right, so this is a straight line. This is a Bezier curve. And if I zoom in, we can see, there we go, uh, how it represents this curve. Um, this dot is the center of the curve, and these handles designate how far out the curve bends. See how far it goes, what direction it bends. So that's how these Bezier curves work. It's, it's created a series of curves and lines to represent our shape. I'm just going to hit Control Z to put that back like it was. So you could go in, if you uh, are familiar with Inkscape or with vector uh, graphic editing, you could go in and you could modify our traced shape if something wasn't quite right. Maybe it misread a pixel and it had a little divot over here or something. You could go in and you could clean that up um, and get it the way you want it. Once we've got it nice and clean, and this looks like a nice clean trace, uh, we need to export it uh, as, an, as a file format that Inkscape can import. And the most common vector graphic format in the industry is SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. Uh, that's like a generic format, kind of like Bitmap, BMP, is a generic format, or JPEG is a generic format for images that most programs understand. SVG files are the most common vector graphic format, and most all 3D or 2D um, editing programs will recognize SVG. So I'm going to go up here to the File menu, and I'm going to go to uh, X... Save As. We don't export in Inkscape. Okay, Save As. Uh, our file format, by default, is Inkscape SVG, but I really want to use plain SVG because it's the most vanilla um, and simplest uh, variant of the SVG format that's out there. So we'll go uh, back to my temporary directory and we'll call this slashed 0.svg save. Okay, we've now traced it. We've exported it as an SG, SVG file. The next thing would be to import it into Tinkercad. So let's go back to Tinkercad, which I have open here. And we'll go up and we'll select Import. Choose a file. I'll go back to that temporary directory. And uh, slash to zero dot SVG. Uh, one thing in Tinkercad, the scale here. Tinkercad is going to bring this in huge. Uh, I usually drop that down to 10. 
I'm assuming this is percent. Um, no, is that showing us in real time? No, it isn't. Okay. Uh, so let's import that, and we'll see what we get. Importing slash zero dot SVG, and hey, there it is. There's our slash zero. And as you can see, it uh, it looks pretty good. It, it already, already extruded it for us. Made it kind of tall, 10 millimeters. We can shrink that down. And we can scale this out too. If I hold down shift, I'll scale both sides together. There we go. So, yeah, there we go. That's how we would get our slashed zero into Tinkercad. Well, at least that's one method, okay? I, I, I illustrated this method because you might use this um, for other things logos. Um, is, is a good example you know if you were working on something and you had a, a logo that you wanted in three dimensions you might use this method of taking it into Inkscape and tracing it uh, exporting the SVG to get it into Tinkercad or into other CAD programs too this will work for Onshape, this will work for Fusion 3D, it's work for anything else most most all 3D programs even Blender will import an SVG file um, but there's a much simpler method <laughs> now that we've gone through all of that check this out we'll go back to our text editor here where I've got a 0 BCD with our slash 0 I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna copy it now I'm gonna come back to Tinkercad and uh, let's get rid of that and we'll go down here and we'll select text okay and for our text dialog here where we can edit the text I'm just gonna paste in my uh, call sign with the slash zero and uh, boom we're done <laughs> so yeah there's the easy way to do it <laughs> but but I wanted to uh, I wanted to go through the uh, the tracing in Inkscape because you can use that for all kinds of other things too logos and designs and shapes and things and, and it's a pretty useful skill to know so for my viewer who wanted to get his slash zero into Tinkercad there's the easy way to do it if you don't mind their font. If you want to use your own font, you can create an image in GIMP, trace it in Inkscape, export the SVG, and import that into Tinkercad. And it's still pretty simple to do. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.